Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be the many weaknesses of the narcissist. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So the many weaknesses that the narcissist has, this is a very, very long laundry list. And you may not have wrapped your head around some of these things, but I'll jump into it right now. First of all, the narcissist at their core, they are a coward and a bully. Think about what they do to people. They manipulate people, they go behind people's backs. They spread the smear campaign and untruths about people. They are envious of people. They are jealous of people. The narcissist believes that what other people possess and or have, which could include tangible assets or qualities or things that make them them, they believe that they should have those. And that's what the core of the narcissistic abusive relationship is. The narcissist doesn't just look for anybody. They look for a beautiful, bright, shining light, just like yourself. They look for somebody with a high level of empathy. They look for somebody who perhaps didn't have boundaries and that perhaps did believe that other people had their best interest at heart. We now know that not many people have your best interest at hearts and the narcissist is way at the top of that list. But the, the many weaknesses of the narcissist, think about another one. They have to play this thing called life as a game. They go through it, business to business, person to person, relationship to relationship, leaving a wake of destruction in their path. The reason why is because they can't sustain relationships. That's another weakness of them. Just when you're getting too close to the narcissist, what do they do? They usually throw a monkey wrench in that relationship or right when you are getting comfortable in the relationship, they will do something, i.e. triangulate you or gaslight you or give you the silent treatment, which so many people experience. The silent treatment, again, it's meant to control you and what you do and what you don't do. And usually the person watching this video will cower or give in to the narcissist when they are experiencing the silent treatment because the person wants to keep the peace. That was me. That most likely was in or is you. And so you will go back to the person who turned out to be a narcissist and you'll be apologizing for something that you didn't even do or know about because you want to have healthy, stable communication. We now know that there's no such thing as healthy or stable communication in the narcissistic relationship, which is another weakness that they have. They are very, very poor communicators. Think about the communication that you would have with them when you were in the relationship usually you would not even know what they were talking about and they would be telling you they're going to be doing a b and c when they're doing x y and z now was that on purpose i can't tell you many times it was on purpose many times it wasn't it was meant to confuse you and the another weakness that the narcissist has not only is communication but is their relationships with their kids these are not usually the parents of the, of the year the, the parents of the nar uh, the narcissist who turns out to be a parent they use the kids as pawns and as weapons against you and against their own in-laws or family members. They don't want other people to have access to the kids unless you play ball and do what the narcissist wants you to do. We didn't know this back then, but we know it now. So who would weaponize a child or who would weaponize a person against another person? Somebody who is very weak and frail and hollow and shallow, and they are a coward and a bully, and that's the narcissist in a nutshell. The narcissist is riddled with weaknesses. Think about the smartphone. They usually need to have not only one or two, but maybe even three smartphones around them. And yes, that's a fact, because they need constant sources of supply. Now let's define supply for this video. Supply for us, the healthy, stable, beautiful, bright, shining lights, that is when you go to the store and you buy Clorox or wipes or something. To the narcissist, human beings are supply. Dogs, pets are supply. Trips are supply. Vacations, blowing them up could be supply tangible assets could be supplied. Anything is supplied to the narcissist. That's why when you get the wisdom and you understand that going no contact and blocking these people is the path and do it now, if not now, when, if you can, or utilize gray rock, become dull and boring, get off the radar, that's what you need to do. But the message may not be ready for you right now, maybe it is. And you, you now understand that in that relationship with the narcissist, they had you tricked and trapped and manipulated into thinking that you were the weak one you were the person who didn't have any common sense. You were the person that needed to see, seek help. You were the person with all the baggage. When you get out of the narcissistic relationship and you really peel the layers of the onion back, you understand that all the baggage of that relationship, it was never yours, yet it was dumped on your shoulders and you were expected to carry that baggage for as long as you could in that relationship until something broke. 
until either the relationship ended because you were discarded or you removed yourself from the relationship or heaven forbid you stayed stuck and trapped in the zombie-like trance-like state the narcissistic fog if that's where you were existing you weren't living you were existing but all of the baggage of the narcissist it's theirs all the issues and the concerns all the heaviness of the relationship all of the weight of the relationship was placed on your shoulders that is why again when you entered the relationship most likely you experience the love bomb slash euphoric stage when everything is puppies and rainbows it's unicorns and butterflies and you think that you just entered the best relationship of your life nothing could have been further from the truth you just entered the worse relationship of your life a challenging toxic relationship that took you on the roller coaster of emotions it dunked you in the deep end of destruction and they pressed the gas pedal of abuse more and more and more once they know or once they knew that they had their claws into you once something changed in other words the narcissist knew they had you that's when they really entered you in that devaluation stage and they began to continue to have you work for them doing things for them because you see the narcissist is so weak they don't want to do things for themselves they need pawns and puppets and enablers and flying monkeys and people trapped in the narcissistic fog they need people to do things for them the narcissist is weak they need people to believe in the mask they need people to pump up their fragile ego so imagine if you will again i shared this example recently in a video imagine if the narcissist was on a desert island no smartphone nothing all they had is food and water and shelter but they had no people, no human beings, nothing. Just them on a desert island for a week. Do you think that they would introspect and be accountable and realize all the damage and destruction that they've dished out throughout their life? Maybe, maybe not. But I can tell you right now, they wouldn't be getting supply for a full week. They would have nobody to pepper with abuse, nobody to gaslight, to stonewall, to triangulate with. There would be no games for them. It would just be them inside their tiny little brain and they would have to introspect. They would have to recognize what they've done and they would have to face what a toxic person they've been and how they divide wedges between healthy, stable, loving, kind people and anything that matters to them. The narcissist is weak. They are riddled with anxiety. They are riddled with fear. Think about this. Every day when the narcissist wakes up, what do they have to do? They have to put on a different mask depending on who they are going to be communicating with. On top of that, they have to look over their shoulder and try to figure out if anyone is going to expose them or if anyone's going to abandon them or if anyone's going to see behind the mask or if anyone is going to put two and two together that in fact they are juggling multiple relationships at one period of time. That's why the narcissist is crawling all over social media because they know they're just one step away from ending the relationship with the current source of supply and they're going to leapfrog onto the new supply or multiple sources of supply, whatever they can do. But the narcissist cannot be alone by themselves. That is why they're always on the go. That is why they always need a distraction, which many times is the TV. It's music. It is a hobby. It is the smartphone. The narcissist needs to be distracted. Think about when you were a kid. Well, what would happen? You would need, your parents would tell you, hey, go, go in the yard and play, or, you know, go swimming or go run around the block or do something that's pre-internet days and pre-smartphone days but that's what we did the narcissists right now what do they do they get supply left right and center from the smartphone and that is a weakness of them because they are becoming exposed more and more each and every day the world is waking up to these people that are crawling all over the planet and the path to do for yourself once you've identified that narcissism was prevalent in your life is again go no contact etc but now you have boundaries now you become the educated empath you no longer are a people pleaser. You can say no, the strongest word in the English language. And remember, when you say no to something or someone, you are saying yes to yourself. You no longer believe in the mask. You know, you now look at people's actions. Do they match their words? Because you went through the ringer with the narcissist in the relationship, whether it lasted a few weeks, months, years, decades, maybe it was your parent, but you now understand that you are the priority. You come first, second, and third. And that relationship had your whole sense of reality spun around. You were believing that that person had your best interest at heart. That's not the case. The narcissist needed you because they're weak. They needed a fuel source. They needed someone to pay the bills. They need someone to raise the kids. They needed someone to give them ideas and they would take the idea and act like it was their own. They needed someone to tell them the path of life. In other words, don't do A, B, and C. You should do X, Y, and Z because you would flourish in X, Y, and Z. Maybe it was a career choice and the narcissist was so clueless they couldn't figure out what to do. Well, what did they do? They listened to you, they took the career advice, but they acted like it was their advice. Keep in mind, the narcissist also is always in competition with virtually everybody they encounter, including their own family members. 
They think they're smarter than others. They think they're more attractive than others. They think that they've achieved more. They think that they will do more in life. And what I'm suggesting here is, are you in competition with anybody? I doubt it. I really doubt it. Maybe when you were playing sports when you were younger, or maybe if you tried to be valedictorian, valedictorian of the high school or university you went to, sure. You were trying to get the best, the highest marks ever, but then that's where competition pretty much stopped, except for maybe in the workforce trying to get a pay raise. I get that. But with being in competition with a spouse, someone who you fell in love with, that is about the most challenging relationship uh, aspect of that relationship to be a part of because you didn't realize when you put a wedding ring on this person and they turned out to be a narcissist that they were competing with you. They were competing to see what you would do, what you wouldn't do, if you would improve your life, if you would improve their life, would you put them high on a pedestal and to the detriment of yourself. All of these things encompass the narcissistic relationship and the narcissist is a weak, frail individual. They are looking for the unpaid helper. They are looking for the walking apology. They're looking for the sounding board. The narcissist is looking for people to, sur to surround themselves with who don't know any better or who are encumbered in that relationship. Maybe, example, you are financially dependent upon the narcissist. Maybe you're one of the children of the narcissist and you're still living under the roof or they're paying your bills. Well, if you figured out that they're a narcissist, and maybe you have, you still have to play ball until you get out on your own but the narcissist will do anything they can to inhibit that so you are financially dependent upon them. That's why the narcissist needs control. That's why they're in competition. That's why they don't want the betterment for so many people. That's why the narcissist is a bully. That is why the narcissist is not the strong one. The strong one is the person who after the relationship ended, introspected and healed and learned and grew and became a third version of themselves, the strongest, most galvanized version of themselves known to humankind. What did the narcissist do when the relationship ended? They slithered away onto a new source of supply. What they did is they hoodwinked a new person who didn't have the wisdom, or maybe they went to a past recycled relationship, but they did not introspect, they did not learn, they did not grow. All they did was change the mask they wore and manipulate other people who knew about the cycle or who didn't, but the narcissist did not improve their life. You may have thought to yourself, well, wow, the narcissist went on to the new source of supply and they're doing so well, they're doing amazingly well. Well, it may seem that way on the exterior, but think about when you were in the relationship. Other people thought that you were doing amazingly well. And were you? You may have thought you were, but now you know you weren't because you were being peppered with abuse each and every day. You were being triangulated, gaslit, stonewalled, all the things I talk about. And one day in a narcissistic relationship, once you've identified that that person is a narcissist, is one day too long. That is why you must remove yourself from these relationships because the narcissist will take you down with them for the count if they can. They will do anything they possibly can to make you believe that you're the inferior one, you're the weak one, you're the one that needs to see therapy, you're the one that needs counseling, you're the one that has problems. But the truth of the matter is, the narcissist is the bully. They're the one who is weak, they're the one that needs help, but they're the one that won't get help. Think about what I'm sharing with you. So many of us have, have leaned on people post-narcissistic relationship, whether it be videos, one-on-one -on -one sessions, therapists, coaching, meditation, all these things. We've really had to put ourselves back together. The narcissist didn't have to put themselves back together. All they had to do was disappear into the middle of the night and find a new source of supply and have that person believe in the mask. And that's how the cycle goes around and around and around. And the one constant in the narcissistic abusive cycle, it's not you, it's the narcissist because they're weak, they need people. They need people to regulate, they need people to abuse, they need people to manipulate, they need people to give them their time, their money, their energy, their effort, their love, their empathy, etc. What do you do? You are a beautiful, bright, shining light that I speak about on the channel and I've spoken about you being a bright, shining light for over three years. You have healed or you are well on the healing path. You are headed towards that pinnacle of indifference, the mountaintop of indifference, where you no longer care about the narcissist or any people from that period of time. But you had to put yourself back together and you face challenging days, dark days, dark nights. Perhaps you lost weight, gained weight. Perhaps you experienced the dark night of the soul. Perhaps you were isolated all by yourself, and I'm sure you were. You shed tears for days, weeks, months on end, and you had to figure out that, wow, your support system disappeared, and that you were tested, and you, the narcissist made you believe that you were weak, that you wouldn't make it. But you did, and here you are in the community, and you're a fortunate, strong, galvanized individual. It's the narcissist who is weak. Think about this one before I close the video post-relationship, once you've healed, or maybe you haven't, you're, you're healing right now. The narcissist and a Hoover. First of all, what is a Hoover? It's when the narcissist is trying to suck you back into the relationship for a minute, a day, a week, month, year, decade, rest of your life. Don't accept a Hoover, it will never benefit you. But having said that, that is exactly the best illustration I can tell you of how weak the narcissist is. Perhaps they discarded you, left you on the side of the road, crumbled up like a sheet of paper, thought you wouldn't make it, but you did. 
and here you are and the, lo and behold months years decades later the narcissist tries to hoover you or contact you to see if you will entertain a communication avenue with them think about how weak and shallow they are they needed to try and draw you back into the relationship because they are so weak they don't have a viable source of supply right now as i mentioned earlier in the video you are not supply you're not a wipey or a piece of clorox you're a beautiful bright shining light you are a abundant beautiful beautiful human being and i believe in you more than you'll ever know and you need to believe in yourself too don't think of yourself as weak the narcissist is the weak one that hoover illustration is the best one i can ever share with you when a relationship ends and it ends the way yours ended certainly mine a hoover is a pitiful thing to do on the narcissist's behalf that's what these people do they will try to draw you back into the relationship and they will change the narrative of the past. They will gaslight you. They'll tell you that all the relationship was your fault. They'll blame everything on you. They'll do, they will do whatever they can to get back to that grade A source of supply, which was you. It's not you. You're a beautiful, beautiful human being. Understand the narcissist has so many weaknesses and I just illustrated about maybe seven or eight there. I could illustrate probably over 5,000 if I wanted to. The point being is the narcissist knows who they are, what they're doing, what they're capable of, but they will never ever change their poor behavior. They will never introspect and they will never be accountable. Think about how many times the narcissist apologized to you. Probably zero. Why? Because they're telling you right then and there that everything is your fault. It's your problem. What, this, what is one of the signs of a strong character person, a person with strong character? When they apologize and they mean it and they can change their behavior and they realize that they hurt somebody else. It's not what the narcissist does. The narcissist, the narcissist is so weak that they can't be accountable. They can't apologize because they don't believe there's anything to apologize for. These people are just a broken record going around in a loop and that loop will continue. It just needs to continue without you. Everyone, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it. From the beautiful Carolinas, this is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, no matter where you are on the planet. You are not alone. God bless you. I love you all. And if you heard some horns during the video, I hope you didn't, but if you did, it's because where I am located, it is a very, very special evening tonight, and it will be again tomorrow night. And if you know where it is, drop comments below. If you don't, well, I hope you didn't hear the horns. God bless you all. I love you, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, I love you guys, and have a great night. I'm going to do this and then close it out. I've never done this before, but I'm going to do it. I love you guys. Good night.